Okay, on our last video, we laid out this three inch tube roughly on a two inch center using a 15 degree pie cut. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to cut these tubes and get it laid out so that you can stack these up and get a 90 degree just like you're looking for. So, what we have here is just some. 3 inch diameter 6061 tubing. Now this is 1 8 wall and I would suggest if you're fairly new to this buy some thicker wall stuff to practice welding on and then slowly work your way down to the thinner wall stuff. One of my strengths is more the fabrication. You know even I need to work on my welding daily to get to some of these stacks of dimes that you see in all over the internet and Instagram. So, once again, this is primarily how do you get it cut and get it laid out. All right, so we're just going to take our tube. We're going to set it on the weld table. If you want any information about this weld table, I'll leave a link in the descriptions. We actually built this on our Jeeping Mo channel. All right, so we know that it's three inch tube. So what's a half of three inch? It's inch and a half. So we're just merely going to take a marker and we're going to mark it at an inch and a half. And the reason why we do this is so that we can locate the tube after we cut it and everything. So I'm just going to line up on the dots and draw a line. So in our last videos we laid out we want 15 degrees, we'll make two seven and a half degree cuts. Alright so we're going to get our line so it looks like it's straight up. We're going to take our first cut. We're going to double check our angle. We're looking for about seven and a half degrees. And I think we're pretty close. 97.4. I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that seven and a half. Alright, so now I need to lay out where our end cut's gonna be. Now per our last layout, we said it needs to be seven eighths. And that's seven eighths off the peak. So I'm just gonna set our caliper on seven eighths, which is eight seven five. And this might take a couple couple cuts to get this 100% right. So we're going to set this right on the edge and we're going to make a line. Now if you remember our other videos we used a block right here. We just loosen the saw and it, it's kind of hard to guess exactly where that's going to be so it's a little eyeball and then we're going to lock it down we're going to put a line here. We're going to have to we're going to cut down to this edge. We might have to bump it a little each way till we get right where we want to be. Now you can see we're off of our line right there. So what we're doing is we're going to measure this. And I'm going to offset this line in, and we're going to make a new cut before we cut it all the way through. So it looks like it's about 300 thousandths. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to make a line 300 thousandths away. Tighten down. And then let's see how close we are to that line now. And what we can do here is we can always just measure it if we want to. So we're about a hundred thousandths off. So we need to move it over just a little bit more. And what happens if you don't have these right on, as they stack up, the accumulation of error 
We'll get you. Okay, that's only 10 thousandths off. So we're gonna call that good. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put, put a piece of tape on the saw and then mark that edge. I'm gonna put a piece of tape down here, a block back up here. And I'm just make a pencil line because it's much finer. There's a pencil line, much harder to see. So we'll cut this one off. We'll rotate it 180 degrees so that the other line is facing upward. So one thing that makes a great lubricant if you're cutting aluminum is just basic old candle wax. Alright, you got all your pieces cut and you're going for a 90 degrees here. And remember that the whole purpose of the pie cuts is that you can form a much tighter bend than you can with a mandrel bent piece of tubing. Remember, every degree you're off multiplies. But if you're trying to get a, a specific angle, which is the reason why you're doing this, you might end up having to make one of these two pieces on the end somewhere a, a total custom piece in order to try to get an exact angle across six of your pieces if one of your cuts let's say your saw is set up and you're half a degree off you're a half degree one so you're you could be a degree off for every one right so when you get to the very end you could be a few degrees off now I know that this stack is at, so I know that this stack, when you check it, it's 96 degrees. So that tells me that my saw was off one half a degree on every cut. One half times the six cuts. So one degree per, it doesn't take much. So you might have to, at the very end, make one piece total custom. Your last piece here, custom fit that last piece in. This is fab work. If these were all CNC laser cut, they'd all go together, and you have a perfect section here. But that's not what this is. This is all fab work. All right, so let's get these cleaned up, which means we're going to lose our lines. So after you've brushed these, most of your lines gone, See, that's one nice thing about a sharpie. You can always take your, you can always take your sharpie. It's faint, but you can still see it. And you can put your line back on. And you can do that enough to tack them back together. You don't want to weld over that line because all of that marker will be in your weld pool. All right. So remember, lay out your pie cuts. If you're just snaking around creating an exhaust pipe going from end to end, you're fine. You have to make a very short 90 degree turn. That's a good way to do it where you can't have that long mandrel bend. Pie cuts work great for that. Just lay out both ends and cut accordingly. Once again, I'm still getting my TIG hand cleaned up a little bit. So from there, if you have any questions about how the other processes are, I'll see you in one of these other videos. Until the next fab job, this is the 4x4 Fab Shop. See you in the next video.